Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. I agree. Let's do it. Thank Thanks you, everyone. On. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, Scott Pieper, the CEO of Mobilization Funding, is going to walk us through our new cash flow management tool and talk to you about why project cash flow management is so important, how it can, how managing your cash flow on a project week by week can help you increase your profit, profitability, build efficiencies into your schedule, and grow your business. Thanks, Autumn. So cash flow is uh, something that's very important to us. We speak about it all the time here with our clients. We work in the construction world and anyone that I assume is on this call that's in the construction world, they don't need me to introduce them the impacts of cash flow, why it's important, how it impacts everybody. But what is important today is we're going to give you a solution that's going to give you information and a tool that allow you to actually make proactive decisions outline exactly what your cash flow is and then more importantly you'll be able to see it in a project live so there's a few things here i'm going to adjust my camera quick a few things that we've noticed over the last seven or eight years and in talking to clients there's a couple main general themes one is clients think that they're weak at cash flow they don't understand it and there's something wrong with them and i'm here to tell you right now that that's not the case this is absolutely a function of the industry of construction more importantly, how the waterfall of monies flow from the top of a project all the way down throughout a project. And what I mean by that is whoever's financing it, the developer, um, the general contractor, the subcontractors, the subs of subs, all the way through, you do all the work first, you put a pay payment in, the work only gets paid for depending on what's actually been done after an inspection. It takes 30 days to do the work because you can only do it once, a, you can only invoice once a month typically. And then, it takes 30 or 45 days to inspect the work that you did. And it just takes a long time. So that is the reason for it. Now, are there people that aren't great at finance that work in construction? Of course, but that's like any other industry and business. So like most other industries and business, there's tools, there's professionals, there's roles and responsibilities inside the organization and outside that can help. And all those are still available to construction. Now, whether they're used or not is a different story, but we've created a tool and this tool is going to add the third component to what we've also recognized one of the things that becomes very commonplace that we've heard over the years is that we've noticed if you ask any construction um, company whether it's a sub or a general contractor they're very good at estimating what the work's going to be they look at a schedule of values they can look at a set of plan i'm sorry they look at a set of plans they can look at a schedule they can estimate and bid Mm -hmm. pretty accurately what their general total costs are going to be. In addition to that, they know exactly what the work schedule is going to look like. Of course, it changes. Of course, if there's rain or delays or other trades and things like that. But at the most part, they have pretty detailed and specific, much more so than it, most other industries, mm -hmm. in my opinion, of what their man hours are going to be, the labor portion of that, the materials, equipment rentals, costs, they do an extensive amount of work to, to get bids and estimates for all those things. So they know what their total amount of work is. What I mean by that is if you did all the work tomorrow and it was done in one day and you can invoice it the next day, you probably have a really accurate margin dollars. The problem is construction takes a long time. So it gets spread out over a couple of weeks or sometimes a couple of months or sometimes a year or more. And so what we've done now is take the third component that's missing from that equation and marry up how much cash do you actually need to execute on the schedule that you know for the expenses and the actual costs that you know you're going to incur, material, labor, et cetera. So that you can see week by week, all right, how much cash do I actually need to execute this project on the schedule that I want to uh, work it on at, at for which I've already bid the project and won. And now you can know, okay, I'm going to need a couple hundred thousand dollars or I need a million dollars. So I'm going to show you what that tool looks like. So it's an, we've created an elaborate spreadsheet that we've always used here internally to figure this cash flow as we speak to our clients. And what we realized is we can share this spreadsheet with everyone and it's on our website and it has been for years, except what we also realized is not everyone's Excel savvy. Candidly, I'm not. Our CFO created this spreadsheet. I didn't. I know how to read it and I certainly know how to input and use it, 
but that's but 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 I'm not. It's not intuitive to me until I've done hundreds of them. But what is intuitive, and what we can do is anyone can answer questions. If we ask you a direct question, you can give us the answer, especially if it's specifically related to your um, estimates and the work schedule. So what we've done is we've created a tool on our website on the resources page that anybody can go to. You don't have to be a client of mobilization funding. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to get um, us emailing you every other day and calling everybody in your company to use it. It's basically, we need we do need your email so we can email you the spreadsheet and the inputs, but that's the purpose of it. We're not gonna use your email to um, sell it, market to it or anything else, okay? So um, Autumn, what did I miss so far, anything? Uh, no, that's a great setup. I, I am curious how often when uh, when you talk to clients, how often is this the first time they've ever thought about their project's cash flow in this way? I mean, yeah. on like a, on a weekly basis to this granular level. So uh, it's, it's a great question. I would say, if again, I'm going to generally be speaking here, I would say 95, 98% of people know the first two things. They have a great bid. They estimated it well. It had a, very, a ton of thought into it, and it's probably accurate. If it was one single snapshot of the world, those costs are accurate. Um, I would say on the flip side, and the same thing with the schedule. I would say on the flip side, when it marries up to, okay, what's the, when I say, okay, how much cash is it going to take to do that? I would tell you that 98% of the folks that we speak to, and just generally in the construction world, whether they're clients or not, probably don't know the answer to that question right offhand. Mm -hmm. uh, some measure the cash flow, but it's more of like, hey, I know what kind of money they have coming in. It's across the whole business or project. They don't necessarily know as they before they start a job or project. That said, if a project is only two weeks long or three weeks long, I would say it's probably a little higher than that. Most know, oh, I need 50, 60 grand this week or this, this, right. this month in order to do it. Um, but when you start having to order materials now, um, they have lead times on them. You have different payment terms for materials. And then when you get to, when they land on the site, you can invoice for them. But sometimes you have to pay for them in different, that becomes too complicated of a, of a process to really map into a project. So I would say very few. It's definitely single digits in my opinion, less than 10%. And you talked about how um, contractors know the first two things, right? They know the costs and they know what the schedule is going to be. Um, but we talk a lot about the things that they might be missing when they're consider when they're putting their bid or when they're thinking about the cash flow of their project. Um, I'm specifically thinking about how you've talked about um, calculating the the real overhead. Can do you want to talk about that just for a little bit? I know we will get into putting margin down um, later in yeah. the yeah, but just just. Yeah, so um, it's a good question. So I, this cash flow tool will specifically outline the cost of the project, mm -hmm. which is really in, in the estimate as well. And it'll show you how much cash you need to flow through it. But when we're looking at estimates and bids, most often your, your average bid doesn't include the proper overhead allocation or margin. What it means is that they just sort of get blended in with the costs. Sometimes it's marked up, oh, I add 10% for overhead and profit. And I add 10% for markup. And it depends what your costs are. As soon as your costs go higher, it's great if that's the cost. It's even better if the costs actually come in lower. But I, I, I'd be surprised at how many folks on here, um, and it'd be great if anyone has questions and want to put it in the, in the chat box, but how many people actually end up with less cost on a project than they do more cost you know, or neutral? So um, it gets it gets tough. Well, the way we're going to calculate the margin, that's that's the biggest issue we see is a lot of times you have overhead costs. Those come monthly with their, you know, they're your rent expense, they're your, your payroll for your staff and your salaries. They're things that are not related to the exact project. And when you pull money off of a project that isn't cash flow positive to pay for those things, you actually make the project significantly even more cash flow negative. And if you look at if you know what the project, how the project's going to cash flow itself prior to using any of those dollars, it can really help you make some good decisions on how you want to use the cash you do have or the financing that you have in place, lines of credit, et cetera, et cetera. So and in terms of in terms of the schedule, because um, we all know that construction schedules change quite often, right? They they're definitely prone to change. 
So if you have this cash flow spreadsheet that we're going to show our audience in just a second, how does how does having a cash flow projection help you manage uh, construction project schedule changes? So it's a great question. So this tool you'll see goes week by week what your expenses are. If a schedule changes and you pull a crew off of that project. The beauty of this projection schedule is as you go week by week or even over the course of a month, you can update those to actually become actuals. So that week will be an actual expense. And so you can keep track of it in real time. And it allows you to know, okay, if this project gets delayed three or four weeks, what does that mean for me in terms of the pay apps I'm gonna actually submit instead of the ones I plan for? Um, if I move my pay, if I move my, a couple crews off of this job and I put them on a different job, then I can move that cost expense off of that project too. If my costs are too high based on when I, what I rent equipment for versus maybe I'm gonna purchase some equipment, you can see how that's gonna impact things. Uh, when you order your materials, if you have to pay for your materials under certain terms, you can see how that will impact your job. That's a big one. And we'll show those in detail. Why don't we go, um, why don't I open up the spreadsheet and then th some of those things will make more sense and I can answer that too for us. Yeah, let's dig right. in. So what I'm going to do, guys, first, I'm going to show you what the out the final outcome is going to look like, so you can get a visual cue of what we're doing. Um, so here's what this spreadsheet's going to look like, okay? And we're going to actually fill this out completely on our website. So this is the final output of what you're going to see. Okay, this is what would get emailed to you, along with a PDF that has all the information you submitted. So really quickly here, and I'll show you this. There's some important notes here it tells you what this all means but generally speaking each one of these columns is a week you can see that the job starts on you know in this case april 8th it goes week by week and automatically can tab uh, tabulates the what you input and all the way through your up here is what you're submitting for your pay apps to your customer here's what your submit here's what your actual expenses are and then down here you're going to see what how much cash you need or the, or the surplus or deficit on a weekly basis. And then the cumulative amount of cash you're gonna need over the course of this project until money start coming in from the project. And we'll show you that. So before we get to here, and then of course at the end, it'll total this up for you and show you, okay, you have a $3.9 million project, less retainage, you're gonna get 3.7 million coming off of this. Here's your costs all broken down gives you what your margin percentage is, gives you what your margin dollars are. This looks awesome. 31% project with one point, almost $1.2 million of profit. That doesn't even include the retainage profit. But when I show you what, how much cash you need, which in this particular case, you're gonna need upwards of a million dollars at some point in this project, to, you'll need a million dollars over the first many weeks to actually get this thing going before you actually see this job become cash flow positive. So let's go through some of this real quick and I'll show you how it works on the website. So, all right, you go to our website, which is mobilizationfunding.com. Now you're on the home page here. Right up here in the top corner, you'll see resources and you'll see cash flow tool. You click on that. You go down here, you see this little video of myself here, kind of explains the cash flow tool and some of the importance of it. I won't bore you guys with that, but you put your email in and then you click build my cash flow tool. All right. So we do fund other types of projects other than just construction and mobilization funding. So purchase if you're if you're a manufacturer or you're doing general assembly or fabrication, or you pretty much let's just say you work off of a purchase order more than you work off of construction, this might be the tool, this might be the version for you. They're all the same ultimately, but they have different questions based on it. And if you have inventory in-house and you sell a specific um, product, this might be a better version. But we're gonna go through the construction one here today. So you click on construction. All right, so I'm just gonna type this in here. Okay, my name, email, company name, the state you're in, got it the project name we're just going to call this 123 oops sorry 123 project but the purpose of this is it it'll this for your cash flow it'll give you the the project name on the spreadsheet right 
when does the project start? Okay, I got my little uh, cheat sheet here. So this is going to be 0401, 2022. And that's, um, just to stop you for just a second, that's my first question technically for the audience here is, does the project have to start in the future or can they do this where the project has already started? You can definitely use this tool when the project's already started. And like I like I was saying before, these sheets, if you're doing it at the beginning before it starts, they're, they're your estimates. Right. But if you're in the middle of a project, you can actually, if you're four weeks into a 10 week project, you can use actual costs for your first four weeks and then your projected costs for the next six weeks so that you can use it completely that way. And again, once you fill this out, that's a good question on because once you fill this out, you get a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet's pretty easy to see at that point. You can you can clearly edit it and manipulate right. it and the formulas are all in there. But if you're familiar with Excel, this is an easy way to get it going. And then the, it's just an Excel file that's not locked or anything. You can do whatever you need to do with it. Right, right. All right. So then here, just be, this is just basic information on the project. Here's your contract value. What's your direct pay, payroll? Again, the idea of this is to come right off of your bid sheet. So if you're looking at your totals on your bid sheet. So in this case, direct payroll is $410,000. My sub labor is a million eight oh two, three hundred and ten. I have two hundred and two thousand of direct materials. This is an actual project cost that we have, by the way, for a client. It happens to be a, um, a, 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 a an HVAC and mechanical contract, and so some of a lot of the material, big chillers and whatnot, are in the subcontract labor, includes mm -hmm. material, and then they, this is this is the direct materials that they have as well. So the equipment rental is 43,000, no bond on this job and 139,000 in miscellaneous costs. So it'll tell you right here, total contract value, your total cost added up for 2596. This project has 5% retainage. It happens to be a, um, a school in Florida. And in Florida, for those of you that don't know, there's a lock on uh, government work for that has 5% retainage instead of 10. Otherwise, it's typically 10. Why it's, is uh, it important to put retainage in the cash flow spreadsheet? Great question. So retainage is part of your margin, and it's definitely important. You're going to make that money, but it's not. You're, they're withholding this this cash back. So if this is a cash flow tool. The reason that you hope put the retainage in here is this is this money is not going to come off this project for you to be able to use. So regardless of what you invoice, in this particular example, five percent of it is not cash that's going to be available on this job. Mm -hmm. All right, we got weekly. Um, you, I'm sorry, you submit your pay apps on a monthly basis. The uh, from the time you submit, <laughs> it put in my uh, zip code there. All right, from the time you submit your pay app. In this particular case, they get paid in 45 days. The name of your general contractor is, or your customer, whoever you're working for, we'll just call them ABC GC. And my expected margin on this is 40%, for example. Okay, I've received no money to date. I don't have any joint checks on this project. And why are joint checks relevant to, to the cash flow of the project? So joint checks are important because if you joint check a supplier, for those of you that don't know what a joint check is, a joint check as defined by us, at least for this example, is when if, if I'm a general contractor and Autumn's the subcontractor and I say, Autumn, I'm going to give you this contract, but I'm going to joint check your material supplier and Autumn's going to put up, you know, her material supplier is the, the supply house. Then I need to, I'm going to sign a joint check agreement with Autumn and her supplier which means as the general contractor, I'm going to pay her supplier at when she submits what her pay up is every month, I'm going to then pay her supplier directly in the form of a joint check to her and the supplier. Why is that important? Well, it's important because that money is also not going to be available to auto. It's going to, it's going to go directly to the supplier. So that's a good thing, but you want to be able to account for that in your project cash flow. So, in this case, you might have thought you had a 40% margin or you estimated it, but it tells you right here your calculated margin is 34.5%. So it gives you the total. And I'll show you what happens next. Okay. So now it's a 25 week project broken down. This is going to be six. You're going to have six pay apps if it starts in April. So I'm just going to input the pay apps here. 
First one's 200,000, the next one's 400,000. While you're in, uh, inserting the pay apps, we have a question from Steven. Um, he asks, we have one client with multiple projects. Do we have to do a separate setup for each project? Would we have to do this exercise for each project? Or can you roll it all up into one cash flow? You can absolutely roll it all up into one cash flow. As you're going on, you can see if you if you really want to do that, you could total these together. Um, and the spreadsheet is totally functional to use as all three. Now that said, and I don't know if the next question is, Scott, do you think that's a good, do you think that's a good thing to do or not? If it is, then I'm going to give you the answer to that question. I would say don't do that um, because each project is going to stand on its own, even though they're a general contractor, you're going to, you may have different costs or different expenses or different suppliers, but to get the effect of the projects in the same way rolled up together, once you get a separate um, spreadsheet file for each project, you can put them in separate tabs on the spreadsheet, and then you can aggregate those tabs all into the one summary tab that gives you the, that will give you the same benefit as if you aggregated them all in this exact uh, template form. So I would go through and do this exercise for each individual spreadsheet. I'm sorry, each individual project. You'll receive a individual spreadsheet for each project. Mm -hmm. You can then merge those onto a separate tab into one file. Mm -hmm. And then you can, through Excel, we'll pull each of those cells from each of those and marry it up into one template and a summary for you. And if you ended, if you didn't know how to do that, um, we can certainly show you how to do that. We have a few Excel wizards here that if you had those three files, we could put them into one template for you you run a quick, there's a functionality to Excel that allows you to pull from each one of those tabs and run a quick and run a quick summary. And then you'll be able to do everything you want. And then if things change in those individual tabs, you can make individual tab changes in the project and see the impact of that. And in addition, you'll be able to actually go in and then see um, uh, how it impacts this, the summary tab too. So you can see them all overall. Okay. All right. So I put my pay app amounts in for each month. I got my total contract here that marries up to what it is. I'm going to click next. So now do I have direct payroll in this job? I do. My direct payroll is weekly. My direct payroll amount weekly is $16,400. And basically what I did was I know I have 410,000 of direct payroll. I have 25 weeks set up. So I'm just going to divide by 25 to get my S to get my, at least get this in here. Now, sometimes your payroll may not be the same every single week. That's okay. Once you get the spreadsheet, you can manipulate the weeks that you need to, but for the purpose of getting this in and totaled correctly, that's the easiest way to manage that. Do you have sub labor? Yes, we do. We know what that is. Okay. So this is subcontractor payment number one. So you, as you guys know here, it tells you I've, I have $1.8 million of sub labor. That doesn't mean though that I'm gonna only pay them one time. So mm -hmm. I wanna input when I need to pay them and what the payment date is. So in this particular case, I'm just gonna enter sub one. What's the, let's say that's the subcontractor's name. The scope of work is installation, the total amount of the pay app, to them to start is going to be 450,000, 577.50. I got to pay them on June 3rd because if they're starting the work in April, they're going to work through April. I'm going to, it's going to take 30 days or so to get paid. I, I pay them when I get paid in this particular case, or I pay them 30 days afterwards. In this, my agreement with them is to pay them 30 days after they submit. So that's June 3rd. Okay. So then I'm just going to go add subcontractor. Payment two, same thing. I click sub one, everything automatically populates here for me. Now in this particular case, this is the same amount. I'm gonna estimate billing. And so now this payment is gonna be, oops. Not gonna be on the 50th of July. Yeah, July 5th, add subcontractor. Sub one, same thing. This is gonna be on August 5th. Add subcontractor payment number four. That'll be the last one. And that's going to be on 0902. Okay. That's my sub labor. It totals up. Click next. 
So I make material you, expenses. If you had if you had different subcontract labor, if you had different um, providers for that, you can enter multiple subcontract labor, right? You could do sub two, sub three, if you had. That's multiple. right. Okay. Yeah, if you have two, three, four subs, you're going to put sub one first when you're going to owe, then you'd go to sub two, and do the same exercise, sub three, same exercise, all those payments will track in there and you'll see how they flow right into the, um, into the spreadsheet here in a second. So we, I have one, they, they actually have one material supplier on here, which was for um, $202,000. But let me, uh, to Autumn's point here, let me show you guys what that, what that looks like. So this is just gonna be material. Now, what do I currently owe this material supplier? Let me, let me do this, material supplier one. I don't owe them anything. So this just gives you an idea. If you owe them money already and you wanna pay them, it gives you an idea, but otherwise this will be zero. And again, we said the total is going to be 202,000, but instead of me doing this as one material supplier, one payment, let me do it as 102, 366. And this is due on, I'm ordering it on the 5th and payment's going to be due. I have 30 day terms, so I'm going to pay for it on the 6th. Now I'm going to add one more material order. So I'm going to show you guys how this will come about. Material two. I'm going to add the other 100 grand in here, a zero amount to pay. 100 grand, same order date, and my payment date is the second. Okay. So I have equipment, yes. Vendor, stick with our theme here equipment one, equipment current balance is zero. This is 43,000. You guys get the idea here. There's no bond on this project, so you can skip that. Do you have miscellaneous expenses? Yes, they do. What is the name? You can enter these as much as you want. This particular happens to be per diem and travel slash hotel. It's 139,000, and I'm pretty much gonna accrue it weekly. So what this will do is spread this out weekly on the model. Mm -hmm next okay now it's reviewing so now what this is going to do is give you a chance to see the spreadsheet here in a little circuit you can kind of cycle through to make sure it kind of calculates right and it moves its way through and you have it and you get to the end here you'll see okay you got it all in so if anything doesn't look right to you you can sort of kind of go through this and figure it out in summary it's going to show you here everything that you input all the way through. And this is what you're going to get a PDF of basically right here. And that's actually what I'm looking at here on this sheet, <laughs> my little printout that I did before. So it gives you a summary of what you did. You can make sure you did it correctly. If you need to go back and edit anything, you can do that. And then you basically get to the bottom. If it all looks good, you hit submit projection. All right, boom, you're done. It was successful. It goes to our underwriting team. They turn around the spreadsheet quickly and email it over to you. And then we'll send it to you and it comes in a nice little email. So let me show you now what you are getting. Now we're back to the cash flow. So we come up to the top. Let's start with the summary tab. Again, just a refresh reminder, each one of these is a week. And if you remember, we started the project on the 8th of April. So each, it automatically calculates every week all the way through. Okay. In summary, we'll go to the end of this. It shows you here a $3.9 million project, less 5% retainage. Here's the net amount you'll receive from the project before retainage. You have 410,000 in payroll, million eight in subcontract labor, 202,000 in materials, and $43,000 here in um, equipment, okay? And then your miscellaneous expenses. Now, 
this shows materials and I only show supply one supplier. I forgot because it takes a little while to put that spreadsheet together. What I actually input was something I already did. So I already had the output spreadsheet. So, but otherwise it would show you here supplier two and there'd be another row that would say supplier one and it would break it down and have it totaled up here at 202. So my apologies for that. But anyway, go back to the beginning. So what this is gonna show you again is here's where you're invoicing at the end of April. It takes 45 days to get paid. So you're not seeing any of this money yet. So what this is basically showing you here, these are the expenses you have by week. This is the actual expenses you're incurring this specific week. And you can see payroll, you pay weekly. So you're gonna to have to incur payroll that week. Mm -hmm. Your per diem in hotels, you're paying for that weekly as well. But you can see the material, equipment, and bond premiums, you don't have that yet, okay? So the spreadsheet automatically calculates two things here for you. Weekly cash flow deficit or surplus, which means how much money am I, do I have coming in from the project? That's zero right here. How much money do I have going out on the project? And that's 21,000. So it keeps it, and this is the cumulative total. So each week over the first three or four weeks, you incur your payroll and your per diem. So you can see this cumulative total of cash that's needed on this project goes up week by week by those amounts, okay? So in this particular case, the first seven weeks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks, I'm sorry, you incur payroll and per diem for a total of, oops, my light went off here. <laughs> For a total of 175, almost $176,000. What does that mean? That means that through the first eight weeks of this project, you're going to need $176,000 of cash in your business to put onto this project before any money's coming off so far. Okay. Now, here we are. You've already, now at this point, through eight weeks, you've submitted a payout for $200,000 and a submitted a payout for $400,000. So you are essentially owed less retainage. You're owed $570,000, okay? But you have 45-day terms. So you submit at the end of April, they're going to pay you in 45 days. Well, that means that this $190,000 isn't getting paid to you for six weeks, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Here it is right here. The beginning of that seventh week, Week seven, you now have that $190,000 comes in. So you can see cash received from the project, $190,000. Cash going out that week, I'm sorry, is only $21,000. So you have a surplus of $168,000 from that payout. But here's what's important to look at. You've, you had to pay your material supplier or your subcontractor $450,000 already because you owe, that's, that's when you said, that's what, these are your numbers you've submitted. So that's there. And you also had to pay for some other direct material, that's 202,000 and some equipment, not to mention the payroll. So if you look at this cumulative project cash flow tab here, by the time you've received any money off of this project, you've had to invest $915,000 on this job. So you either have to get that money from other jobs or projects, have that money in the business, or have some way to finance that along the way, okay? Or what we would encourage you to do is now that you've had this up front, figure out how you can manipulate some of these numbers here. Can you pay your material supplier in 45 days? Well, that would be really helpful because that would move it, that would move it farther down the line. That would drop this 915 by half Okay. Or same thing with equipment and suppliers. Can you get longer terms? And if you can't, okay, no problem. But you have to know in advance that this is what you're going to need. So maybe you need to rework the schedule. Maybe you need to go back to your um, customer, see if you can get paid in 30 days instead of 45, if that's possible. If that's not possible, okay. Can you get a deposit up front? No. If that's not possible, all right, great. Can you get some financing for this? And now you know how much financing you'll actually need. And more importantly, you'll know where you're going to need it. Do you mm -hmm. really need 915,000 all on day one? No, you really need 21 grand a week for the first few. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So going through this tab will show, okay, boom, 915,000. Now it drops the next week. Well, why is that? Well, that's because you got 168 grand that is surplus between what went out that week and what came in for the mm -hmm. project. And now it starts to accumulate again until the next big one. So the maximum outlay on this job is going to be a million, one million two hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars of cash that you have to put onto this project before you can become cash flow positive mm -hmm. through July. If you look here, it's actually going to get even higher, up to a million four, because it takes till August twelfth before you get your first big pay app in paid to you. Now the project starts to really get better and better. By the time this next pay app comes in, six weeks later, you have 400,000. The next one comes in, boom, now you're cash flow positive. So here's the thing that's important. This is October 14th, okay? Based on your schedule and your expenses, mm -hmm. you're starting on April 8th. So six months later, this job becomes cash flow positive by itself. And yes, you have a great margin and you make great money. You got to get through this period. You got to get through those six months mm -hmm. to get to the point where this project can cash flow itself. And then you'll make, you'll make this money. The problem is a lot of folks are looking at these totals and saying, this is great. I got a 31% margin. It's going to work out awesome, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is now, you know, do I have a million four to invest in this project to get to it? No. Okay. How am I going to execute on it? Now, let me show you guys one thing, just one simple adjustment. Here's the week of August 5th. Okay. Let's just say you're able to get your payment terms from 45, all your expenses stay the same, but you're able to get your payment terms from 45 days down to 30. Okay. Remember this week, this column here, August 5th. Stop sharing this. I'm going to share the 30 day version with you guys. All right, now all I did here was I moved these payments from 45 days to 30. You'll see here, this 190,000 that's due, one, two, three, four, paid week five instead of paid week eight. Mm -hmm. Now look at these cumulative cash flow here as you go on. You don't have that big $900,000 one, it's only 769, mm -hmm. okay, 725. That week of August 4, 5th, where we had that big pay up, remember it was a million four? Well, it's only $623,000 now. So literally, just knowing that in advance and negotiating that up front is critical. It means you literally need, in this case, $780,000 less money, less mm -hmm. real cash on this job to execute this project. Scott, so, would you would, would you recommend when when you're looking at this spreadsheet and you see that and you start playing with those numbers and you see how much how how much being paid by in 30 days would would help your cash flow? Do you recommend taking this spreadsheet to the GC and having that conversation? Because I know that, that some of our audience is going to say, "Yeah, I'm not going back to my GC and asking for different pay terms because I can't afford the job." Right there they're going to think I'm weak because I can't afford the job. They're going to think I'm bad with money because I can't afford, like, talk to me about how you present this to the GC. So it's a good question. So I, I think that you, you've covered a few, you've asked a few things there in my mind. Um, the first thing is, I think this is eye open. Um, I, I think a lot of, I think a lot of subcontracts will have those feelings. Um, hey, I'm just going to make me look weak. Um, I can't finance it. Uh, the GC might give it to somebody else. And you know what? They might. All that's true. But here's the thing. Like, who cares? Like, who cares if they think you're weak? First of all, you're not weak because they're not investing a million dollars into this. I mean, if, if they want to, just tell them, okay, fine. You can pay all my material suppliers. Here's the line items. Just pay them. Then you pay them. Because, like, watch what happens here. If they take on that and pay this instead, and I, I zeroed these out here, well, yeah, now you only need $172,000. And even if they took it, even if they took the 799 from here, it's less that you have to pay. So there's a lot of options that you could go back to. Um, I just simply wouldn't worry about those things um, in the same capacity because it just, 
the truth, the truth is it's not worth losing your business or getting upside down on it or giving away all your profit. I personally think, yes, that's a hard conversation. It, yes, it is. Um, it's, it might make you look bad. They might think you look bad, but you know what? The only person that's going to make you look bad is yourself. You, you, you're not, who cares what their opinion is? Like people are going to have, that's their opinion. You say, look, man, I do great work. You gave me this contract. You actually gave me this contract because I do good work and I know how to do it. And let me tell you something. I don't do work that that's going to put me upside down a million dollars. So I need to work something out. Now I can show you how I've sophisticatedly put this together using this cash flow tool. I can show you how this expense is. You don't need to show them what your margin is. You just need to show them, look, I have 30 day terms with them. My suppliers can be 30 day terms. You can right. use this information, but you don't need to show them all this. You can delete all your margin now. They don't need to know your costs. All they need to know is what you have to pay and what you, what you owe in certain periods of time and what you have up here. Maybe you don't even need to use, use this product. You just need to go show them, hey man, based on these terms, I need 30 day terms, why? Because I gotta pay my suppliers in 30 day terms, I gotta pay my labor. And basically here's, here's what it is, Mr. General Contractor in a nutshell. I got to put a million dollars, million, one point four million dollars out on this job before I get cash flow positive, and that's just too much. So we need to figure out how we're going to work that out. What can you do? Well, you can pay me in thirty days. I can't do that. Okay. Well, what can you do? I can get you a deposit up front. Okay. Cool. What kind of deposit can you get? I mean, you you can start to have real conversations. Now, if you don't want to talk to your general contractor, then what you can do is you just start to leverage your you, the, you, the, um, your customer, not your customer, but you can start to leverage your suppliers or you can take it to your supplier. Here is a perfect example. Your supplier, you have 30 day terms with, right? Well, they're $900,000. Your sub, your sub is 900 grand or a million eight of, of your payments. Well, can you stretch them to 45 days or paid when paid? That'll make a huge difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you take your material provide suppliers and get better terms from them? Those are the types of things you can do with this information in real time, long before you're sitting there with a crisis, not wondering why you've got these big billings in. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that said to yourself, man, I owe X amount of dollars to my suppliers. I owe 750 grand to my suppliers and I got my AR. I have a million in this particular game. I have $1.3 million owed to me. If I could just get the money owed to be paid to me, I'd be square. Like I'm sure everybody said that to themselves. Well, it doesn't work that way, but Yes, you're right. If you did get that money right away, you would. So what I suggest doing in these cases then is using this information to figure out how you can manipulate it. But this is powerful just to know it. So talk to me about how um, how looking at the project from, from this perspective, from a weekly cash flow perspective, can help you increase your team's performance. Well, if you're going to run projects and they're going to have a major deficit, it's going to put stress on everybody, right? So if, if you're stressed, it's going to put your team under stress. And if you're the leader of that business or you're managing the project on a project and you're stressed out, it's going to add stress to everyone else. It's going to hurt their performance. If um, you, if with this info, it'll also let you know where you can provide some incentives, you know, like, you know, here's a perfect example. If you can get this $200,000 invoice up to five or 600,000, how can you do that? I don't know, maybe there is something you could do. Maybe you could pre-order some materials to get the materials on site. Maybe you can, maybe it makes sense to put three or four crews on this job because the payroll is pretty, even if you doubled your payroll, it's pretty negligible here, right? Not too much, but if you could double this first pay app or get, one of these $800,000 or $700,000 payoffs here up front, or you could manipulate your schedule of values into a different, reconstruct them in a different manner to get more money up front here. Now you know exactly how that would impact what your cash flow is, which is mm -hmm. going to make your team more incentivized. If you give them goals of, hey, I live, this is what we need to finish with month one. We have to get this much done. I don't care if you get it done. It, let's work six days instead of that, or I'll, I'll authorize some overtime or whatever you need to do. It just gives you a lot of leeway and flexibility to A, motivate them, but also B, keep yourself out of stress, which is only going to get pushed down to your team. And I know we have this story um, 
we have a customer story from Andrew Ammons where he did exactly that. He was looking at the cash flow tool and yes, he used our financing, but but the cash flow tool was what showed him that if he put two crews on the job and if he had the super uh, additional um, additional supervisor and ordered the materials in advance, he would save, I think it was eight weeks of of payroll. He got the job done eight weeks earlier. Yeah. So instead of using one crew and, and he was, a, he was a roofing contractor. So instead of using one crew to go in and prep the roof and then that same crew to go back in and install the roof, he basically put a, two whole crews on mm-hmm. one, one of them, one crew went out a couple of days in advance and started the prep and started to rip the roof off and put the, put everything together. And the second crew came out, this is a big uh, government, a VA hospital. So the second crew went out behind them and started prepping the roof at the same time. Well, why that was important is they had free reign of that site for that first 10 or 12 weeks of the project. And if he spent one crew going out and doing all that, and that took them six or eight weeks, and then he spent sent that same crew back out for another six or eight weeks, they would have not got as much done. Where he was able to put a, get it done was while they had free reign of the roof, mm-hmm. they were able to get on that roof with double the amount of people and just work right in tandem behind each other. And they got all of it done. And basically instead of 12 or 15 weeks, they got it done in six or seven weeks. So it saved them the eight weeks worth of time and eight weeks worth of labor that was budgeted. So uh, my last question, and then we can open it up. We have a few minutes. We can open it up to the rest of the, to to the audience, either on uh, LinkedIn. If you're on LinkedIn live, please just drop a a chat. in the message box, or if you're on Zoom, drop it in QA or in chat. But my last question is how can you use project cash flow tracking to grow your business? Well, you know, the person that asked before, should they do a separate project for each one? It's a great question because if you're mapping out these projects and you take your bid, you map each one out and you know exactly how much cash it's gonna take to execute on it, you can do two, a couple of different things. You can start to determine how much financing does my overall business need? If I'm gonna go get an SBA loan. Should I get half a million dollars? Do I need $2 million? Like, what do I need, right? Um, you'll know because you can map out what your work impress is. You can map it out on, the, on these sheets to see what how much cash do you actually need. Um, the second thing is you can g- make these decisions in advance of starting the project, which will give you the ability to think more about being on top of your business instead of every week just managing crises that are in your business. And if you're on top of your business, thinking about what's next and where we're going to go, you can start to build your growth strategy a lot easier. So it's really about knowing that the exact cash so you can figure out the right way to finance the growth. Um, or, or do you bring in equity or do you try to get debt? Do you want to bring in a partner? If you bring in a partner, how much should you bring them in for? You know, these are all the kind of things that you'd be thinking about when you go to want to grow and knowing your numbers by project and then aggregating them all together is going to be key for you. So I think that's really how that works. It also lets you know how you want to incentivize your team. Um, if you're going to grow, you want to make sure you have a great team. If you have a great team and everyone's working hard, then they'll be they'll be more motivated if they if you know how to incentivize them and put things together for them they're going to be you know more involved and have a more sense of ownership and equity as opposed to man i wonder if we're going to be okay my god my owner seems stressed the project manager seems stressed is everything going to be all right mm-hmm. you know that's not just a, that's not a good environment to try to grow in so we have a question that just got dropped into the chat and i'm guessing it's a little tongue in cheek, but I do think it's a, it's a good moment for you to talk about our do your part campaign. Um, Ben asked, the the real question is why are we contractors instead of developers? Which I, right. (laughs) Which I do think, um, I, I, I would love for you to, to talk about the do your part campaign to kind of answer that question. So it's funny, you know, like, again, and I think that, I think the part that we're getting it there is that, you know, you finance the whole job, you're basically developing it. Someone else has the idea. Um, I think you're right. You know, it, it's true. You, you, you finance the whole project for the developer. Um, it's, you do take a ton of risk and it is a lot of heavy lifting too. I will tell you if, if it's a private project and a developer is doing it, the developer definitely has risk in it too, because the banks aren't going to give them 100% financing. The 
the general contractor is probably offloading their risk more on, on you than the developer might necessarily be in those cases. For example, if it's a $10 million project and a developer goes out to get financing, they've, they've most likely put in at least $2 million of real money, real cash before the bank gives them that 80% or seven, seven and a half million in that example. Um, so I would tell you that they probably have some significant skin in the game beforehand. Now they don't want to put any more of that money off the project, but your general contract is probably the one that is taking a little offloading some of that risk onto you. Um, the other thing I would say is our do your part campaign is there's been some things I would call them um, stuff that is goes about in construction that's just accepted and it, it shows up in chats just like it did right now it shows up in the side conversations it shows up on the job site, but it doesn't necessarily show up in the job trailer, or it doesn't show up when when you have developers and GCs and banks talking, they just accept this and one of those things are is that subs do finance the whole job and it's not right. Why does it take a bank 30 days to come out and inspect a project? Why can't they just pay people within seven or 10 days? I mean, we just showed you the impact of two weeks, 45 days instead of 30. Well, imagine if that 45 days went down to 15. You, you would need maybe a quarter of the money or maybe not even, maybe, maybe even less. So those things are the things that our Do Your Part campaign is supposed to talk about. And do Your Part is let's get out of the habit of living in these moments that we have to figure out like, oh, we can't bring it up to our GC. Our G G GC is going to think are weak. Well, you're not weak. Like subs are not weak. I mean, anyone living in this subcontract, in this in this cash flow environment is, is going to suffer. I mean, if you took a restaurant and told them to pay, feed everybody for a month, mm -hmm. bill, bill everybody at the end of the month and wait 30 days to get paid, you wouldn't have a restaurant in sight. They'd be all gone. So does that mean restaurant owners are weak? That mean restaurant owners suck at finance. That mean owners that like terrible. No, it just means that it's a shitty finance scenario, and that's what it is for construction. So get that out of your heads if thinking like I'm going to look weak or it's going to be bad or they're going to give the job to someone else. Look in this scenario here, if you don't have a million four to put on this project, despite the fact that you're going to make a million two if everything goes well, you're not going to make that million two unless you have a million four. We all know that. So. Mm -hmm. It's not a good project to take. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It just means it's not a good project to take. And you'd be surprised when you start telling general contractors that want to give you the work that you can't do it or won't do it because it just doesn't meet your doesn't have the right terms. You'll be surprised what they're going to be willing to do. Mm -hmm. You'll be they, just like you don't want to talk to them. They don't want to talk to the developer. Mm -hmm. So they take the path of ease, least resistance, which is push it to you. But if you push it back to them. And they, they look, I'm going to do great work. And the way I do great work is A, I have a finance partner that helps me. Or B, I don't take terms like this to do these projects. Or C, whatever it is, they're going to respect that. And right. it's really, in my opinion, it's more the insecurity that a subcontractor has that they need to get over than it is anything else. And if you're not willing to have that conversation, do you really deserve different terms? If we're going to be honest, probably not. So have the tough conversation, bring it up you'll be surprised. You're going to get what you want more often than you're not. We have another question. Um, yeah. Stephen, Stephen asked, should we go to mobilization funding? What are your general terms? Yeah, I think, of course, we're a great option for many people. We, don't, we can't finance everyone, um, but we do finance a lot. Um, we're a great option for something like this. I mean, this is a real client of ours that submitted this. Um, we can't lend them a million four. So we, we, let, we, we typically lend up to 20% of a, of a project's contract value. Um, our general terms, and when we layer in a finance, so give you, for example, we'll take a sheet like this and then try to build a loan to essentially fill the cash flow sh shortages that you saw, that, that cumulative project cash flow deficit. We try to bridge. The, the gap of cash that's needed from the start of the job till when it gets cash flow positive. So let's say, for example, if this is a $3.9 million job, it's a, it's a big one, but it doesn't matter if it's a million or 500,000, it doesn't matter. So let's just say in this particular case, we could lend up to $800,000 on this job. And someone said, eh, we, we it takes a million four. And by the way, I have 800,000. I just don't have a million four. Can I borrow 600 from you? Sure. That would, that would work. And they would put their 800,000 in and we would put our 600,000 in and we'd bridge that gap from zero to there. We'd mm -hmm. show you what the cost of the financing is in that. 
And so you would know if, when you get to the end of that project sheet, you know what, I'm just gonna show you guys while we're sitting here on this. Um, when you get to the end of that sheet here and you're at the bottom here and you see what your costs and expenses are, just imagine another line item in, oops, just imagine another line item in here that showed you what the financing costs were. Mm -hmm. So let's let's just say the financing costs were fifty thousand dollars. So instead of two million five hundred ninety six thousand of expense, you have two million six hundred and forty six thousand dollars of expense. And then we would show you what the impact is to your gross margin. Instead of thirty one percent gross margin, you end up with twenty nine percent, twenty eight, or whatever that math is. But our typical costs on a project are somewhere between one and 3% of the overall gross margin points. So again, that example, if that's 31, you might end up with 29 or 2% of the project. The way we charge is a monthly interest rate on whatever the outstanding balance is at that specific time. So even though it's $800,000 loan, but you only needed $22,000 a week, well, then you're only paying interest on the that cumulative amount as the loan gets tranched. We call it tranches. You kind of think of it like a project line of credit that you can't mm -hmm. draw down and use again. You just draw it down, but you don't draw it down, take more payback, take more. It just, it just gets drawn down. So it takes you from the start to cash flow positive. But that gives you a general idea of the, of the dollars. The beauty of this is the spreadsheet that we create comes back to you with the actual project and the way the financing would work in it and the exact cost of that financing in dollars and exactly how it impacts the project. So then you can make real good decisions and we don't have application fees or anything like that too. So if someone applies, it doesn't cost you anything to get the information. Like I said, we can work, we work with a lot. We can't work with everybody and not every project is perfect, but, um, but, but yeah, we're certainly a great option. So um, if you want to try the cash flow tool, and I highly recommend that you do, you can visit us at mobilizationfunding.com. I did drop a link. If you're on uh, LinkedIn Live, I dropped it right in on Scott's LinkedIn. So it's right there in the chat. Um, we will have a replay of this webinar available on our website. If you're joining us on LinkedIn Live, I will share it um, on our mobilization funding uh, LinkedIn platform and Scott, will, I'm sure Scott will share it on his personal social as well. Um, and I encourage you, if you liked what you see here, we have lots of cash flow content. Um, Scott's actually working on a book on cash flow, we, but we have tons of blogs about it. Um, and the best way to stay in touch with us is to sign up for Scott's newsletter, it comes out twice a month, um, has personal uh, letter from Scott and then whatever our most recent content is and our upcoming webinars as well. Um, Scott, was there anything I didn't ask that I should have asked or any closing thoughts? I have one. Um, look, if you guys like this, you think it'd be beneficial, please, please tell people about it, share it. It's, it's not, um, it's, it's available to everyone. There's no cost to it. It's, it's our way of doing our part. We have a mission to do our part in this do your part mission. And that do your part mission is to change these nuances of construction for the better. You know, let it be accepted that you can have a finance partner in construction. Let it be accepted that you can have a conversation with your GC that you need different payment terms without looking weak. Let it be accepted that you're not weak because you can't finance a project for everybody, you know, and that it's okay to talk about and, and that no one is terrible with finance. You're actually fine with finance. It's a cash flow scenario, you know? So we want to change all those conversations, providing this tool to that we created internally for us to evaluate loans, basically, um, to give it to everybody to use for themselves is our way of do just one of the ways we want to do our part um, in changing the way cash flow and construction and, stress and is, is related to construction too often and we want to eliminate that and this is a great way to do it by giving information and um, education so please share it with everybody um, the best you can and and go out and have a great day basically what all i want to say thank you so much thank you for your time today scott thank you everyone for joining us and uh yeah try the cash flow tool and then let us know what you think have a great yep. rest of your day Thanks, everybody. And find me up, find us on LinkedIn and let's connect there. Absolutely. Appreciate you. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.